Shalom. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Well, there is a rumor going around that within the next few weeks, the current president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, will in fact declare martial law. Apparently this will be done as a result of continued spread and mounting death tolls being caused by the virus. It will also be done as a result of apparently too many people not heeding the stay at home uh, advisory. A lot of places people are still going about their daily lives and living their life and I do not blame them for that. But apparently, these people not taking it seriously is going to be used as the reason that and the mounting death toll, which by this current pace, probably by somewhere towards the third part of third week in April, might be reaching maybe seven, 10,000, who knows, in America. As a result of those things, Donald Trump will declare martial law. This will go into effect nationally. Now, if you've been paying attention, there have been videos surfacing on the internet of long, massive trains moving military equipment all over the country. It would appear that when you look at the, that movement, and this has been going on for maybe, maybe a couple of weeks now, the idea and plan to declare martial law will not be some kind of sudden uh, thing that is declared as a result of people not heeding the, the curfew. The fact that we've seen this military equipment moving all over the country that tells you that this was planned, you know, all along. This was planned, uh, you know, probably before the whole stay in, stay at home order was issued. You know, I mean, these are the type of things that they cannot hide. They cannot hide their movement. You know, so the people who know about these, seeing these troop, these uh, vehicle transport trains all over the nation, we know that the declaration of martial law was already in the works in the first place. You know, naturally, though, when they finally get around to it, it will be declared as a result of, like I said, people not heeding the, the uh, stay at home orders and the rising uh, death toll. So that's the rumor. And uh, things can start getting very uh, rocky from here on out, especially if this rumor turns to uh, true, it truly uh, turns out, you know, uh, when you get down that road, thing about martial law, <clears throat> it has been declared before here in America. The last time was in Louisiana following uh, Hurricane Katrina. And, uh, you know, everybody knows the many stories that came out after that. But uh, one thing that did come from that was that the action of using troops and National Guard personnel to disarm uh, American citizens during the martial law event was uh, deemed illegal. Uh, in fact, a, a law was passed against such practices. So that's not really something to be concerned about. Uh, I imagine uh, 
local police could still attempt to do something like that. But using National Guard troops to do it is, you know, there's a law against that. And that law was written as a result of what happened uh, in New Orleans during, a, you know, following Hurricane Katrina and the whole martial law incident out there. Aside from that, I believe uh, martial law was declared back in the 60s during the civil rights uh, movement. <laughs> uh, so the country has had some dealings with this. It was, but we have to understand this is a different America than it was during the 60s. It's even a different America than it was during uh, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, martial law being declared on a national level and being used to effectively quarantine an entire nation, that's a very tricky thing to do. You know, a lot of people like to look at what happened in China, but there are stark differences between America and China. You know, the most prominent of which is the fact that uh, we are armed here in America. American citizens are armed. They are legally able to be armed, unlike in China. So it's like walking on eggshells, really, you know, you know, you sit up here and say, well, the troops are armed, too. Yeah. So you got two armed forces. You have the, the National Guard troops and you have the American populace. And one side is trying to tell the other side what to do. That is not a good recipe. And, uh, you know, as frustration mounts, uh, you know, things, it's a powder keg. It really is. You know, people are, you know, for the most part, enduring their isolation. But, you know, as the weeks go by, you know that, you know, it is testing the patience of many people. Uh, apparently, the rumor is stating that the martial law would just be in effect for about two weeks. And I'm pretty sure we will hear constant, constant reassurance of that. That will be constantly told to us that this is just for two weeks. It's just two weeks. I mean, they will repeat that over and over and over again. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. Promises like that are disastrous when they are broken. So telling people that it will just be for two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, and then two weeks comes around and those troops aren't being pulled out. See, stuff like that, you know, two weeks come around and the only thing you get is excuses as to why it needs to be a little bit longer. You know, see, promises like that don't break easy. They do not break easy at all. And like I said, you have two armed sides now, not one. Now, if it was in China, it wouldn't matter. You can continually break promises like that over and over and over again. And all those Chinese people would be able to do is grin and bear. It. But. Like I said, this is not China. This is a powder keg, quite literally, a powder keg. So, here's hoping that rumor turns out to be false, but I doubt it will be because we've seen the equipment move. 
they are moving that equipment all over the place. And that's the reason why. And since we are seeing the kind of equipment that they're moving, seems like there are tanks involved in the, in the shipment. They may actually already be anticipating receiving fire because that's basically what those tanks would be used for in civilian areas is basically as moving cover. You know, they wouldn't I don't think they would be deploying those to actually uh, fire any mortars from them. You know, that would they would just basically be there as cover, you know, to protect the troops from enemy fire. So, uh you know, we shall see, but uh, it's looking like that one will turn out correct. Uh, something else to consider. And I think it's, I mean, I find this quite amusing is that apparently they are officially referring to this virus as the beast I've seen on a local uh, well not local national news networks where commentators are saying that they are referring to the the virus as the beast I think I saw that that doctor guy, whatever his name is, even say it too. you know, playfully, they're referring to it as that. But of all the things they refer to, why the beast? You know, see, things like this, this is how they reveal things to the general people. You know, a lot of tongue in cheek stuff, a lot of humor. But all the while, they're revealing something to you. So they, they're referring to the virus that everybody's afraid of. And that supposedly is, you know, you know, has the nation's emergency rooms looking like, quote, war zones. <clears throat> they're referring to that virus as the beast. I mean, it makes you uh, wonder, you know, kind of harkens back to that piece of scripture, you know, in the New Testament, I believe, where it talks about the mark of the beast and, you know, the whole thing and how I think I made this uh, connection. A lot of people are making this connection is that and they're openly saying this now, you know, certain people are advocating for this. People like Bill Gates are advocating that. Uh, that they, you know, institute mandatory vaccinations and that along with that vaccination, you get a maybe some kind of a card or something like that to show that you've been vaccinated. And only by having this vaccination will you be, you know, having this the creden credentials to show that you've been vaccinated. Would you be allowed to travel? Would you be allowed on airplanes and things like that? So, you know, <clears throat> it's like I said in one of my other videos, we got two prophecy, end time prophecies, apparently attempting to be fulfilled here. We have the prophecy that these people are purposely trying to fulfill with the mark of the beast and all that different kind of stuff. And then we have the most highest prof prophecy, which was uh, outlined in the Old Testament in the Tanakh. So they're moving along with it and they're even giving it the, the, the uh, they're even using the, the, the terminology now. They're referring to the virus as the beasts now, you know. And then when you get your vaccination, that will be the mark of the beast. That will be the mark that you've been given to show that you've been uh inoculated against the beast, you know? <clears throat> so, very interesting. Uh, and speaking of the hospitals, there are videos starting to surface now where people are 
taking their cell phones to their local hospitals and they are quite simply recording. And they are recording to see if what we're being told on the news networks about hospitals being overrun with patients and hospitals looking like, quote, war zones and stuff like that. They're just going to see if it's true. And these videos, and there are many of them out there, are showing a quite different story than what we are being presented on uh, the news networks, the mainstream news networks. So, uh, it makes you really wonder what is real now, you know, we know the moves that they're making are real. We know that the plan to enact martial law is real. We know that they're working on vaccines for this supposed virus. We also know that they are working on making test kits more widely available and making testing more easy, easy to where it can be done pretty much anywhere. We know they're doing these things, but when it comes to the virus itself and how much it is actually devastating the medical industry in our in our country. Uh, well, mounting evidence is showing that we can't be too sure about that. We can't be too sure about what we're being told in regards to that. All this talk about personal protection equipment being in short supply. But I saw yesterday morning an article where a man was arrested for having over a million masks. This man apparently hoarded a million masks and I have to wonder is that really truly what happened there? Was he hoarding the masks or was he maybe taking those masks away from somewhere else? You know, doing things to create a shortage. How many more people like that are, at, are active in this country who are taking masks and different personal protection equipment away that that are meant for various hospitals. These people are taking this equipment in order to create a shortage. You know, you know, they may be people that work for these contractors that, you know, you know, ship the, the, the masks and stuff to the various hospitals and they might be, you know, cutting the shipment in half and saying, hey, this is all we got. You know, instead of a, a hospital getting 10,000 masks, they only getting 5,000. These people are taking the other 5,000, you know, and storing them in a warehouse somewhere in order to create a shortage. And what of the Christian soldiers? What of the Christian warriors? What will we see them do? Are they going to finally wake up and answer the call? Isn't this their one nation under God? Isn't this their land? All the things that they continually tell us. Isn't their way of life being threatened? Wasn't that one of the main reasons why they were bombing the hell out of people halfway across the planet? Isn't that the, one of the main reasons why 
They brought so much death and destruction to the world was because those people threatened their way of life. They hated them because they were because they're free. In other words, that I mean, that's the excuse we always got. They hate us because of our freedom. Well, you know who else apparently hates you because of your freedom? It's these same people who are telling you that you need to endure isolation for a little over a month. It's the same people who are getting to unle getting ready to unleash martial law on you. It's the same people who are telling you that a pandemic is killing so many people and is overrunning uh, hospitals. These are the people who truly hate your freedoms. These are the people who truly hate the way of life that Americans have always uh, pounded their chest about. I wonder how much they truly love that way of life. I guess we shall see. Shalom.